Hey, didn't see you there. This is Ask Nanometer, your technical questions answered in plain English. And today's question is, is PWM dimming bad? Spoiler alert, the short answer here is no, but if you stick around, I'll talk you through how it can be. First things first, what is PWM dimming? PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation, and it's a technology that's used on both the dimming signal side, basically not a, all that impressive digital alternative to zero to 10, and as the physical method of reducing a fixture's luminous output. Today, we're gonna be focusing on the latter. So how does PWM work, you ask? Let's take a quick trip down to my lab and we'll find out. A PWM signal is essentially just turning the light on and off many times a second, so to the naked eye, it appears less bright. When we dim the fixture further, we're essentially extending the amount of time the light goes off for. Take a look at this oscilloscope and you'll be able to see the waveform change as we dim. Basically, as we dim here, you can see that the amount of off time is increasing and increasing until we ultimately flatline the fixture. The time that the fixture is on for is known as the duty cycle. So why would anybody say that PWM is bad? Real talk for a second, flashing the light on and off to dim it doesn't seem the best way, does it? And to be honest, it used to be terrible. But the fact of the matter is, with constant voltage fixture, the alternative method, current reduction dimming, can be even worse. We'll get to this in a second. The PWM frequency is the measurement of how long it takes to complete one cycle. So if you have a device with a PWM frequency of 1000 hertz or one kilohertz, that means that a device is switching on and off 1,000 times a second. In PWM dimming, with a lower frequency, you're gonna experience some level of flicker like this. If the frequency is increased, the visible flicker will become less intense until you reach about one kilohertz. This is the point where flickering should no longer be visible. There are devices on the market with higher frequencies, and although in theory the higher the frequency, the clearer the dimming, a frequency that's too high can introduce other interference issues. So anyway, now we understand what PWM is, and that if we have a frequency over one kilohertz, we're in the clear as far as the flicker goes, let's go back down to the lab and compare the two options. All right, light lovers, as previously mentioned, on a constant voltage circuit, we ha essentially have two ways to dim our fixture. One's gonna be current reduction, and the other is PWM. We've talked a bunch about the PWM, so let's take a look at the current reduction. In this setup, I have two meanwhile type B drivers, others are available, and they are connected on the same zero to 10 volt loop. One driver is connected to a single board, the other one is connected to multiple boards. So let's start by looking at the oscilloscope, and as you can see, as I dim the fixture, you do not see that square, wa square waveform. That's because it's not being pulsed. So if you take a step back, you can now see that even though these fixtures are on the same dimming loop, they're not dimming at the same rate. This is because in constant voltage setup like this, using current reduction, the dimming of the fixture is determined by the load attached to the driver. So if one is loaded more than the other, like in this case, it will not dim at the same rate. Let's do the same thing with the PWM drivers. Okay, so now we've reconfigured this setup. So we've got the single panel and the multiple panels now connected to two separate nanometer DM10X uh, dimming interfaces. So if we come in and you take a look at this oscilloscope again, you can now see, oh, look at that. The uh, square waveform is back from the PWM. And if you take a step back and you take a look at these two fixtures, it's a bingo. They are both evenly dimmed. So there you have it. PWM is not bad. And in fact, it's actually pretty useful. Don't forget to submit your questions either to our Instagram at NanoLTG or via email on info at nanoltg.com. I'm Gareth with Nanometer, and you are watching Ask Nanometer. Ask Nanometer.